guys. I just wanted to make a quick video illustrating my process in the preliminary steps of a basic Raspberry Pi project. I'll be using a very simple and common DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor and using data from that and some Python code to turn on and off a powered accessory, in this case, a fan. You will see in this video that once you can send an electrical signal from the Raspberry Pi GPIO interface based on conditions, then you have the basis of most home automation projects. To start this project, I needed data on which to perform an operation. In this case, I had recently participated in troubleshooting someone's DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor project and thought it seemed like a great starting point for this video. Here, we can see the very basic Python code I stripped out of an online tutorial for the DHT11 that also added things to their code like a notice when there is no data. I left that stuff out of this part. This is simply a basic program that imports the necessary libraries, sets the variables for the sensor function, sets the temperature and humidity variables from the sensor's read retry function, prints that data to the screen, then waits for a predetermined amount of time before looping. I wrote this program in Thawney IDE, which comes installed in Raspbian by default. Thawney features a combination of a text editor for your Python code, a Python shell, and a listing of any active variables at the time of a crash, among other features. It's a really useful interface that combines everything you need. Here we can see how I've set up my breadboard. The power and ground rails on each side are connected in horizontal rows all the way through, while the internal pin connections are linked in columns, splitting in the middle. I have connected the 3V3, or 3.3 volt power rail, to the positive rail on the breadboard, and the ground to the negative rail. The DHT11 sensor I'm using is already mounted on an interface board, and only requires connections to three pins, power, ground, and signal. Here we can see that I've tied power to the 3V3 rail, the ground to the ground rail, and the signal pin connects to GPIO pin 4, which is stated in the code. When we run the program, we can see the repeated output of temperature and humidity looping according to our time interval. At this point, I decided it was time to do something based on that data. A basic thermostat function could be to send an on signal to a heating or cooling unit based on a temperature limit that gets exceeded. So, I borrowed some code from an online tutorial that makes an LED turn on and off, and I made that happen according to the temperature variable. Here, we can see in the code that I import the GPIO library, set up the interface and set pin 18 as an output, and here I added an if-else condition that checks if the temperature is over 25 degrees Celsius. If it is, it prints text that the fan is on, then it sets the voltage for pin 18 to high. Pin 18 is capable of producing 3.3 volts in its high setting. Otherwise, print text that the fan is off and set pin 18 to low, which is off. The while loop still pauses for a time interval before repeating. We can now add an LED to confirm that pin 18 is turning on and off as expected. When connecting an LED to the GPIO, you need to add a resistor since the LED is capable of demanding more amps than the GPIO can provide, which can damage the GPIO and the whole Raspberry Pi very easily. The GPIO shouldn't be asked to produce more than 16 milliamps, which isn't very much. The jumper connects pin 18 to a 330 ohm resistor, which then connects by the breadboard column to the long or positive end of the LED wires. The short end of the LED wires is negative and connects directly to the ground rail. When I run the program, you can see that the LED is off and the temperature reads below 25 degrees Celsius. When I warm up the sensor by breathing on it, which takes a moment to register, the light turns on. The power feeding this LED may not be able to power much on its own, but as the control signal for a relay, which controls a separate power connection, the possibilities are endless. You could have that signal turn on a high voltage connection to a light, a water pump, an electromagnet. It could be literally anything. In this case, we'll turn on a motor and pretend that it's a cooling fan motor. This is a little DC motor that I salvaged from an old printer I got for free through a local area online marketplace website that may or may not have still worked as a printer. I don't know. 
I just wanted some motors. I measured the amp draw on this motor in the circuit earlier with a cheap multimeter. It was pulling around 50 milliamps. While that's well above the 16 milliamps available through the GPIO, I think the Pi 2B I'm using has up to one full amp or, or 1000 milliamps available on the five volt rail. So I should be fine running the motor off the five volt rail, which can handle more amps than the 3V3 rail anyway. To trigger that connection, I'll add a simple relay. This relay can handle household AC current as well as up to 30 volts DC. So I'm not pushing any limits with five volts DC. The trigger current for this relay only needs five milliamps, which is perfectly in range for the GPIO signal, which connects to the signal pin. Positive and negative pins connect to the rails. The rails on this side of the board are connected to the five volt and ground pins. The relay terminals are labeled NO for normally open, COM for the common connection, and NC for normally closed. Normally closed is the side of the relay which remains internally connected with no trigger signal. It'll remain unattached in this circuit, so the fan will remain off with no signal. It doesn't really matter which way these wires go since we aren't using the NC terminal, but power from the rail goes to the common connection, and the NO terminal connects to the motor. I'll also add the LED and resistor so we can see more clearly when the relay is activated. Here, we can see that the motor and LED remain off while the temperature reading is not above 25 degrees Celsius. When the temperature sensor is warmed, the reading exceeds 25 and the fan motor turns on. As the sensor cools, we can see the motor turn back off as the temperature drops back below the threshold. I don't really have a lot of experience with this stuff. I'm not an accomplished programmer or electrical engineer. But I wanted to show how someone with limited knowledge can piece together some code from readily available demo code and make a functional circuit. I hope this helps someone get started connecting whatever sensors and whatever devices they happen to come up with. Thanks for watching.